Hey everyone, Blaze here. Welcome to a very long overdue. I can rhyme. <laughs> um, Disco Tag 1980s Blu ray haul video. Part. What are we on? Part 3, 4, 4, 5. Must be 4. So let's get to it. This is in, as far as I'm aware, chronological order. You know, order of original release when these were made, but uh, rather than doing some of the usual research on my anime list and anime planet like I would normally do which are fairly reliable I decided to just go with blu-ray.com so maybe less reliable but here we go okay first up we got a film that I watched for the first time last year that was on my to watch list for a number of years before that uh, way before it even had any you know we had any notice of there being an official release in the works uh, because it had been fan sub long ago and it just looked really cool <laughs> And I just never got around to it. Um, yeah, that film is... Um, is it 19, yeah, 1986? Obviously, we know that. The video is chronological. Whatever. Uh, Arion. Or Arion. So this is the Greek uh, mythology uh, epic that <laughs> Sunrise made back in 1986. Unfortunately, this is only in Japanese with English subtitles. Just quickly touch on that because before I forget. Um, Discotech wanted to do a dub for this. And man, that would have been cool. But unfortunately they didn't get a um, M&E track, a music and effects track. Apparently it was not obtainable, so no dub could be made. Sad face because, yeah, I've now seen this film and it blew my socks off. I really, really, really enjoyed this film. Um, sort of hard <laughs> to put into words as to why I thought this film was 10 out of 10, which is what I gave it. Um, it's just... For the longest time, I have been super interested and curious about Greek mythology. Just like the whole story, the stories therein. But anytime I've tried to get into it, learn more about it, I've kind of like hit a brick wall where it turns out like a lot of the bear, like, I can't think of the right way to phrase this, but for example, I tried listening to Stephen Fry's audiobook about Greek mythology and I just kind of got lost because a lot of it felt like it was just very uh, <laughs> it seems kind of ridiculous to say given that you know it's already about gods and mythological beings and all this sort of stuff but it felt very not grounded in a reality that I could quite uh, visualize in my mind it felt like a lot of the stories were just like these wishy-washy sort of things like, oh this happened and then this happened and I'm just like where how and all this sort of thing, not to say it would have done, obviously it's mythology, but just like, I couldn't quite get a grip on it. And I know there's like lots of like sword and sandal type films out there that have been made in Hollywood and the like, but I've just never jumped in on any of it. So this was really like kind of like one of my first real exposures to uh, Greek mythology. I mean, the closest thing I got to before this, outside of like something like Hercules or whatever, um, was... Um, the Netflix animation series, what was it, A Touch of Zeus, Blood of Zeus, Blood of Zeus, I think it was called, uh, which wasn't particularly good, to be honest, um, but I just randomly watched that on Netflix uh, a couple of years ago, but anyway, so yeah, this was kind of like my first experience of it, uh, like in, in some ways, and it just kind of gave me everything I wanted, it gave me like a proper grounding in some sort of, you know, ancient Greece, sort of setting that I could really uh, lock onto and then from there just experience the the majesty of all this crazy god stuff like god v men you know god versus uh, men and mortals versus the immortal and all that um, yeah I just really really enjoyed it and visually I thought this film was incredible it sort of reminds me as honestly as an overall package of like my favorite anime film ever uh, Princess Mononoke from Studio Ghibli. Now, it's not on that same level. I did give them both a 10. Uh, I could probably give Princess Mononoke 11 out of 10, frankly. <laughs> I mean, it's just on a whole other tier in many ways. But it's this film kind of reminds me of that in terms of like its cro construct. Not not so much like story-wise, although you could kind of see some comparisons. Like the big evil, to some degree, in this is Zeus, and then you know in Princess Mononoke we've got the big. Uh, forest spirit sort of thing less evil but you know you know what I mean and just like the general construct of war 
and this is also has that. This is a very similar build up towards the end. It feels like there's sort sort of similar comparisons towards the beginning as well, where Erion here is uh, basically an outcast of sorts, and obviously the main character in Princess Mononoke, the main male character anyway, is also you know kind of forced out of his village for various reasons. And you know I don't know. There's just some mirroring similarities that really just made this sort of feel completely new and interesting because of the Greek mythology part, but also kind of familiar, um, even though it, you know, it was made 11 years earlier and by a completely different company and completely different people behind the scenes. Uh, the director for this is, uh, according to the back anyway, <laughs> I'm sure it's correct, <laughs> Yoshikazu uh, Yasuhiko, who uh, directed, as it says here, Venus Wars and Crusher Joe the movie, both films that I really, really enjoy. Not so much as this one. This is now my favourite film of his, but uh, yeah, I, I enjoy both of those other, you know, two other science, uh, science? <laughs> um, two other summarise? I actually don't think Venus Wars was... I have it to hand down here, actually. It's... So yeah, the <laughs> Venus Wars wasn't uh, made by summarise, which I didn't, that's why I wanted to double check, so I was sort of thinking it probably wasn't. Um, but yeah, obviously Crusher Joe was, and you know, uh, Yoshi, uh, sorry, uh, Yasuhiko here uh, directed both of those films and this one. I enjoy all three of them, this one now being my favourite. Um, I know, it's just really cool, like, you, I mean, you get to see, like, Zeus and Poseidon and, like, Eris, I'm pretty sure, Eris, Eris, yes, Eris, uh, Athena. Actually, interesting parallel here, I didn't actually necessarily realise till right this second, uh, Venus Wars. Uh, the um, soundtrack to Venus Wars is done by uh, Joe Hisashi, and so is the soundtrack to this. So there are some Studio Ghibli Princess Mononoke extra comparisons to be made there as well, all these parallels. Um, yeah, uh, I've talked about this for way, way, way too long, but I highly recommend it if you haven't watched it yet. Obviously, I really, really liked it. I would hope that others would at least enjoy it. I'd be surprised if you didn't. Um, it's just... It's just very well made, very, very cool, very, like, epic type storytelling. Uh, yeah, like, if you have any interest in Greek mythology, even that, like, a passing interest like me, who's just, like, never really taken a dive on it, I highly recommend giving this a chance. You might really, really enjoy it, as, like, like I did. Okay, so next up we got another uh, vault uh, find from Discotech. Um, possibly one of the least expected ones in some ways. Obviously, this isn't something they put out before. It was put out on DVD. I did own the DVD since sold it because I've upgraded to the Blu-ray of Violence Jack. So this is all three episodes remastered from film negatives, film prints, whatever, on Blu-ray in all their horrific, gory, nudity-filled... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Whatever, basically. Um, yeah, uh, as it says on the front, warning, mature content, adults only. So, yeah, so far, I haven't actually watched all three episodes yet. I decided to jump in on the second episode because I wasn't really feeling the urge when this came through to re-watch Violence Jack. It's pretty brutal, pretty gory. Like, it's very just, I don't know, like, horror type stuff in many ways, uh, like just body horror, to, I, I, I don't know, it's just not always to my taste, to be honest, it's very shock value sort of uh, entertainment, um, <laughs> but I decided to go with episode 2 because I was just so curious, because like, episode 2 is the one where it's just like, most brutal, like there's a lot of really kind of gross stuff that happens in episode 2, and I was just like, if I'm going to watch any of these, I'm just going to go with the one that is arguably the most horrific, the most shocking, I mean, episode 3 has its moments. Episode 1, I can't remember what, Evil Town or something? Or is that episode 2? I can't recall, to be honest. But, like, um, yeah, the first one's not so bad, but, yeah, the second and third one's definitely, and the second one being the worst, in my opinion. Watched it in beautiful... Sorry, it's re-centered <laughs> myself a bit. A beautiful high definition. Uh, yeah, it was quite an experience like there's I mean that second episode has like gang rape multiple other parts of rape uh, quite significant you know gory murders cannibalism like <laughs> it's, it's seriously fucked up um, yeah uh, violence Jack um, <laughs> we have it on blu-ray beautiful blu-ray doesn't it look amazing um, yeah it's a thing 
it's a, it's an experience and it's just something i can't believe that we have in this sort of quality like i mean obviously like they put out you know various you know completely terrible horror movies and like from like the 70s and 80s and like glorious 4k and things like that but it's just like that's live action film print like you kind of expect that stuff to happen it's just been the norm for so long but like with anime especially it's just not something you'd expect and this is just something i never thought would happen not something i ever necessarily wanted in my life so much but um i'm, I'm glad it exists like it's it's insane this thing like it's by far for me one of the most shocking anime that have ever been made like i'm not that's not to say it's like high quality and like super shocking like it's kind of trashy it's not anything too special it's not anything that's going to really revolutionize your opinion about anime or anything like that um but uh whatever i was trying to get out with that i don't know but it's just like one of those things it's just like it's a thing that exists and it's quite the experience so if you're willing to jump in if you're a bit of a horror hound maybe like this might appeal um if you're not and you're kind of averse to blood and guts even in anime where i'm not a horror hound in the slightest i'm a i'm a wimp when it comes to <laughs> horror films i have no interest in watching them at all don't get a thrill out of being scared <laughs> basically but when it comes to like um anime i'm more open to it it doesn't really bother me as much um but this sort of bothers me not in a scary way but just in like a grotesque way a gross out way and it's not even like incredibly well animated but just i think kind of what i was trying to get out before like this isn't a particularly amazing thing in that uh, way but it is a still a shocking thing it's not something that you see a whole lot of um you know maybe in the world of like hentai maybe and what's that one that i used to own that never watched it and i've since sold it uh what was it called the um for some reason the only thing that's come to mind is utere ramono <laughs> which is not even close that's not it um, Yurukusaka Doji, whatever it was called, uh, Overfiend or whatever, which is actually obviously a hentai, but like, I feel like that might be in the same sort of ballpark of what you might expect with this, but this is obviously, <laughs> in that case, slightly more family friendly, I don't know, whatever, violence chat, talked about that for way too long, um, yeah, <laughs> moving on, uh, let's, uh, use this as a good, uh, mouthwash, shall we, uh, Urusei Atsura, Lum the Forever, uh, this is the fourth film, and uh yeah I've, I've still not watched any of urusei atsu beyond like first 10 episodes and uh, the beautiful dreamer as i mentioned in probably all the other videos so far for this 80s haul where i've been showing these movies um, my plan is to buy the tv series which is obviously going to start coming out pretty pretty soon maybe by the time this video actually gets edited and put out on youtube it'll already be out the first collection or be on the verge of coming out but um yeah my plan is to buy those and watch the TV series and then as and when the movies would have come out, at least the first, I think these first four movies would have been on, uh, or would have been released in theatres, whatever, uh, as the TV series was airing, although maybe, maybe this one is the first one where the TV series might have already finished by then, maybe it was 200 episodes, so it would be about four years of television, so... I don't know, but um, regardless, happy to have it. We'll watch it as and when is appropriate. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll obviously look up a list somewhere. I'm sure someone's made a list. Um, my guess is it's basically a case of like when you get you just look at the air date order for the episodes, the original episodes in Japan, and then like the theatrical release and just squeeze in the movie when appropriate. Because obviously, I doubt these connect to the TV series too much. At least not. Uh, the first few movies anyway. So yeah, whatever. Urusei Atsa, Lumna Forever. I haven't really talked about anything, what it's about. I don't know what it's about. Um, lights, camera, action, wait, a talking tree. That's not in the script. What happens when you're trapped in a movie that makes no sense? Sounds fun. Look forward to it. <laughs> um, okay, next up we've got a standard definition. Uh, uh, Mecha, giant robot series. I think this might... No, I think this is still 1986. Uh, does it say on the back? No, as always, I'll moan about it. Why don't they put it on the back? It makes sense. Uh, but no, apparently not. Um, yeah, uh, the series is Machine Robo. Da, 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 da. <laughs> Machine Robo. Um, 
obviously looking forward to this um this is like right at the tail end of like um uh, the giant robot like mecha boom of like basically most of the 70s but I'd, I'd argue that in terms of like saturation of uh anime you could argue maybe like the mid 70s up to like the mid 80s and at this point in 1986 like machine robo is kind of on the tail end of that it's so <laughs> kind of like missed the boat and getting its chance to become super popular although there are two seasons of it as we'll see but uh still um i forget uh what studio made this one is this uh this one's an ashi production so Maybe go and pick this one up sooner rather than later, given what happened to most of the other AC production titles at Discotech uh, license. It seemed like this one might have a short term license, so if you haven't got this one yet, go and get it. But yeah, it's all 51 episodes on standard definition Blu ray, um, Japanese English subtitles. I really like the inside art on this, pretty cool, with all the girls on it. In the back, <laughs> kind of like this, um, was it like uh, what the Mystery Science Theatre almost looking font there? Um, and oh, it's on two discs. That's cool. So we've got two discs, same uh, image with the girls and the same image from the front. But uh, yeah, uh, Machine Robo. I know it's grainy apparently on the video. <laughs> awesomeness. Um, actually, saying that, the film print, like obviously this is standard dev, but uh, yeah, this is quite grainy looking. It, look, it looks really nice. I did. I seem to re remember putting this in anyway. This does look really cool. Uh, it looks, it's all 47. Okay. So it says 51 episodes of, yeah, all 47 episodes of the TV series, and then the four Lena OVA episodes are also included uh, in the original Japanese language with, with English subtitles. Isn't one of those, like, the lightning trap thing about these two girls on, like, a, who um, are on a plane when it gets hijacked? There's something to do with Machine Robo, I'm pretty sure, that I've watched before, because I thought it was just an OVA. Um, fortunately, like, I doubt there were any spoilers in it, and if there were, I've long since forgotten. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I do remember watching that OVA, because I was like, oh, it's a 30-minute OVA about a plane heist and hijacking or whatever, like, I'll oh, watch that. Um, so yeah, I have seen that before, so I have seen some of the franchise in the past, but, um, yeah. Uh, an evil organisation, Gandora, plunders the peaceful robotic world of Kronos. Okay, so it's not set on Earth, that's interesting. While well, searching for a mythical energy source, the Hyra Bead, whatever, which is said to grant eternal life. Uh, the young champion who challenges them is Ron Stoll. That's almost Tomino bad, but just understandable enough and just simple enough that I'll let it go. <laughs> you get a pass for that. Uh, that's R-O-M, Rom, and S-T-O-L, Stoll, Rom Stoll. Um, heir to the Sky Space and Heart Fist Martial Arts School. What the hell? That sounds like something from freaking... Is this like Mecha Martial Arts, like Fist of the North Star shit? Because that sounds amazing. Um, uh, so yeah, he's the heir to the Martial Arts School, founded by his murdered father. But just before he dies, Kirai Stoll bestows upon his son the Wolf Sword which Ron can use in the time of need to transform into a more powerful form. <laughs> v, v Kong Fu, really, V-I-Kong-Fu. Is that what his robot's called, V Kong Fu? Vi Kong Fu, V Kong, that, that's pretty cool. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm being sold on this show the more I read this. I knew some of this, but not obviously not enough. Um, now Rom is uh, joined by his sister Lena and uh, metaf metamorphosing, I can't say that. Metamorphosing, there we go, <laughs> allies Drill and Jet as they build a machine robo army to defend Kronos against Gandora's horrific menagerie of cyborgs. Complete collection of 47 episodes, blah 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 blah. Uh, yeah, machine robo. Uh, yeah, obviously, as I already mentioned, AC Productions could go out and print pretty soon, uh, so pick it up. Okay, I think this might be the last one for 87. I oh, know, the first one for 87, actually. I think that, or is it? Oh, I don't remember. It says 1985 here on the back. That's not what's here. Okay. Now I'm curious if I've actually already talked about this one. I don't know. Okay, according to Blu-ray.com, this came out in like 86. But maybe that was because there was an English dubbed version, which this is not. I may have already talked about this one. Who cares, I guess. I can't even remember. I don't think I, don't, I have done, because I'm pretty, pretty sure I picked this up moderately recently. Um, whatever. Uh, the Wonderful Wizard of Oz. Forgive me if I've already talked about this one. <laughs> um, but yeah, this is the complete Japanese language version, which is maybe why Blu-ray.com has it 
you know, misplaced because they might have had the dub uh, year instead. But, um, yeah, so maybe the dub came out in, like, 1986, 1987. But, yeah, this is the original Japanese version. I wasn't too interested in the English dubbed version. Um, but I saw the first episode of this in Japanese when Discotech kind of experimented with putting some anime of their dub-only dub releases in its original Japanese on, like, um, YouTube and stuff. And I heard the opening theme for this in Jap Japanese and just fell instantly in love with it, just like I do for almost all 80s anime openings. But this one in, in particular is just delightful, joyful little anime opening. I'll share a link in the pin comment for it. I highly recommend giving it a listen. It's got beautiful, adorable animation in it as well. I just love the opening, all told. And, you know... The Wizard of Oz is kind of a classic story that I imagine most of us have at least experienced in some way. I don't know how you kind of drag that story out across 52 episodes. Obviously the movie is the movie, but it was based on a book. I'm pretty darn sure <laughs> it's based on a book. So I assume there is certainly more that they could tell. And I imagine there's a lot of episodes in this that are probably, you know, nothing to do with the book or the movie or anything. But, uh... Yeah, I don't know how much I will necessarily enjoy 52 episodes of The Wizard of Oz, but I'm willing to give it a chance. So here it is. So yeah, uh, there is the image slightly different from the English uh, dubbed version. Um, yeah. <laughs> and then we got inside artwork, which is the same as the outside. And it's all on a single disc. So yeah, Japanese language, English subtitles with the awesome opening and endings. Um, uh, I just read a little bit about on the back, and uh, obviously it is based on a book, duh. Um, but also it says, uh, where is it, uh, which goes beyond the tale of Wizard of Oz to introduce you to new friends like the Gump, the Sawhorse, Jack Pumpkinhead, which is interesting, and Belina, plus new adversaries in the Witch, Mombi, General Ginger, and the All-Girl Army, and the Bitter and Scheming Gnome King. So it seems like there is um, stuff from, I mean, some, I think the movie might have came out after this series, but in Japan and stuff, but it seems like, obviously because it's based on the book, so there's part of it is has the stuff from um, Return to Oz. Is that what that film's called? Um, you know, the technically Wizard of Oz sequel from the 80s, which I really, really like. <laughs> like I like the practical effects of it, just the general... Uh, visuals of it and that's got like the gnome king and the pumpkin head jack and stuff so yeah that's all pretty cool so um yeah knowing that it's a bit more expansive beyond like just getting to the you know emerald city and all that there's a little bit more to it um is kind of uh well awesome basically uh makes it a bit more interesting to me um i just wanted to uh pick this one up i've already showed you inside um because I was sort of thinking it might be one of those titles that, you know, goes out of print in the relatively near future. I mean, I imagine it's not like a crazy hot seller, so I doubt they're printing a lot of them anyway. And maybe the license isn't too hard to keep a hold of, or too expensive to keep a hold of, or whatever it is. Maybe it was a long license. But, um, yeah, I went out of my way to pick this up sooner rather than later, just on the off chance that it went out of print. Has of... As of right now, it doesn't seem likely it will be going out of print anytime soon. But um, yeah, uh, Wizard, of Oz, Wizard of Oz, Japanese language version. Next up, we've got uh, one of my favourite, uh, like, well, kind of one of my favourite films of the 80s. Um, it's a Yoshiaki uh, Kawajiri film. Uh, I obviously really, I don't know if you know this, I have talked about it before. But uh, I really like the works... Uh, directoral tutorial works of uh, Yoshiaki Kawajiri, a madhouse, primarily a storyboarder, but he got to do a lot of directing work in the late 80s through to kind of the early 2000s, I guess. Um, he, he directed a lot of madhouse films, uh, this one based on a horror uh, novel, um, Wicked City. On Blu-ray, looks uh, amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I really enjoyed seeing this film on Blu-ray. It has some like more questionable content in it, less questionable than say *Violence Jack*, but still, uh, there is like you know a couple of like not explicit, but you know they're there, sex scene sort of things, and just general nudity and gore and stuff. So warning signs on that. But 
I don't know. Uh, Wicked City is really cool. <laughs> I just love the general aesthetic of this film. Like it's just a beautiful film, and I just love the atmosphere. I just love how Kawajiri films. Uh, I don't know, like the way he uh, works with like blue and blues and blacks, and then having like these red and pink uh, highlights to things. I just really love his style so much. And then like the uh, like general gravitas to like a lot of like the dialogue scenes like there's a real weight to a lot of the conversations that happen in this and then, then again just like the general character designs and stuff it's all really really cool uh, this is just a really good release because it has you got three audio tracks on it basically well technically four but you've got a, a UK uh, dub I think I was done by Manga Entertainment and uh, I think there was a streamlined dub probably says it just says US and UK English versions uh, yeah but I think there's a UK manga dub an American streamlined dub and then a um, I think a streamlined and then obviously the Japanese but then there's also a Mike Tool commentary track which is a really good listen as well um, yeah this movie is stunning on blu-ray uh, just super happy to have more Karajiri on blu-ray obviously we've been sort of uh, spoiled with that I mean Discotech have put out four of um, Karajiri's uh, films on Blu-ray I'm pretty sure at this point with this uh, one and Demon City Shinjuku which we'll be talking about in the next video uh, for this series of haul videos or whatever and then um, Cyber City Uedo which obviously I picked up and then Vampire Hunter D Bloodlust so yeah like, there's just like a load of <laughs> really cool Karajiri stuff that's out on Blu-ray and I'm just super happy about it it's just one of my favourite directors like it's sort of weird because like I don't think I, other than Vampire Hunter D Bloodlust, like a lot of the other films I give like 8s and 9s and it's sort of like, arguably you could say I prefer the works of like Hayao Miyazaki or Satoshi Kon, you know, things like that, but ultimately, like I kind of champion Karajiri stuff because I feel like it's a little bit more under the radar, it's almost like my hipster choice if you will, They're a little bit more under the radar, but deserves to be celebrated, it's a little bit more darker, like edgier. <laughs> in a way, uh, especially compared, you know, to, like, Studio Ghibli stuff, but, like, yeah, um, I just think it's really good, it deserves to be appreciated, that just that tad bit more than maybe it is, just a little bit more, like, a little bit more mainstream, you know, it deserves to be on in the same conversation as, like, Satoshi Kon and Hayao Miyazaki and the like, um, in my opinion, anyway, but, uh, yeah, uh, Wicked Sea, um, did I show the packaging? I can't remember. <laughs> Oh uh, no, I don't think I did. So yeah, we've got this new inside art, which is pretty cool, because I'm pretty sure the original DVD, which I've since sold on, um, did, it did come with a slip cover, but I'm pretty sure it used the same art underneath. But yeah, so we've got this slightly different artwork underneath, and then same on the back. And then disc art uses the uh, other art from the... Yeah, um, yeah uh, there's also storyboards and screen segments, as well as the commentary and obviously both of the English dubs, so yeah, pretty cool release, highly recommend it, um, wouldn't be surprised after seeing Discotet do a couple of uh, uh, still books for things that they've already put out before, like obviously they've done like the Konosuba ones, but they're doing, uh, or have done, uh, Fatal Fury, the motion picture, as a still book, despite already releasing it on Blu-ray, like, I feel like Wicked City would be a good candidate for that, it might be something I would consider double dipping on but I don't know but anyway that's that now we get to something that is like a huge pickup that I did ages ago like honestly I've had these for years and years at this point I even pre-ordered uh, the first set here but it got cancelled it was at the time when Discotex releases and their warehouse issues were at kind of like uh, not their peak, but like that's when it first started happening. So I put in a pre-order for this, and it got cancelled. I was like, "What the hell?" Um, and then it just took me a while to eventually pick it in, getting to picking it up. But uh, I did do so ages ago at this point. But yeah, obviously I picked up Kimigori Orange Road on Blu-ray. So this is the complete TV series on Blu-ray, all 48 episodes, Japanese language with English subtitles. Unfortunately, no dub for this, despite its actual long-term presence in uh you know western anime fandom and just the market in general in america at least like this was one of the first tv series to ever be released in america like anime tv series 
Um, but yeah, obviously never dubbed. Uh, Animago originally did like a giant laser disc box set. Uh, I think they did volumes as well, but obviously you could get a box set on laser disc with this series, which looked pretty bad. And then they did a complete 12 volume run of DVDs, um, which looked pretty bad. <laughs> and then after years and years, probably like almost 10, 15 years of, uh, or so, we got a discotheque blu-ray which looks pretty amazing <laughs> not pretty bad it looks pretty amazing um in fact uh, this is kind of based on like the netflix basically this series uh, appeared on netflix fully remastered you know from film negatives and like a substantial upgrade on anything that anyone in the west had seen uh, i don't know if uh, i presume like the uh, dvds for kimigori orange road in japan couldn't have looked anywhere near as bad as the ones uh, that we got uh, from Animago, but um, yeah, uh, <laughs> so yeah, it came up, appeared on Netflix, looked amazing, and then Discus had come along like a year later before like the series had even got a Blu ray box in Japan and said, Hey, we've licensed the series, we've got access to these uh, new masters or whatever, and we're going to be putting it out on Blu ray. And kind of an interesting tidbit to that is that Discotech's release came out first compared to what is now, there is now a Japanese Blu-ray box, and apparently the discotheque release actually looks better, which is interesting, you, you wouldn't necessarily think that to be wholly possible, due to, I imagine there's probably having uh, less discs in it, I imagine the Japanese set has probably more Blu-ray discs, and therefore more bit rate to play with, but apparently this uh, looks superior to even the Japanese Blu-ray box, which is pretty cool, so yeah, you have this brand new art, um, which looks really, really cool, like super 80s. And yeah, I, I've seen this series before. I watched it via the old Animego DVDs I used to have. Sold those when this was announced. And uh, yeah, so I haven't actually rewatched this on Blu ray yet, but I have seen like the first episode in beautiful high def. And my god, does this series look amazing! And yeah, I really, really enjoy this series. It's basically a love triangle uh, series between our main boy here and these two girls. Um, and there's a weird twist to this series. Um, is that the main guy and his uh, family are all um, espers. Uh, they can like control things with their mind and all that. And it's sort of weird because it's like kind of not necessary to the story at all. Like, in the end, this is mostly just that general, um, you know, love triangle stuff. But yeah, like he's he's from a family of espers. He's an esper himself and he can control things with mind. And occasionally that... Uh, brings up like humorous moments. I think even the cat here might have powers, maybe not. I think he just gets floated around a few times. I can't remember. Yeah. Honestly, it's been a while. But uh, yeah, I really enjoy this show. The music to this series is amazing. Like the opening and endings are incredible. Um, the character designer, I think, is Akemi Takeda. I think is her name, who obviously worked on Pat Labor as well. She's part of Headgear. And uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure she's the character designer for this series. And I just love the whole aesthetic for this, and like, it's just a shame that my first experience, somewhat a shame, it's just a shame that my first experience was like the Animego DVDs, because they really did look very bad, like, they just weren't good at all, lots of ghosting, just terrible line detail, like, blown out colours, like, it just wasn't a good looking DVDs release. This looks incredible, I feel like it would be almost like watching this series again for like the first time, and um, I'm quite looking forward to eventually doing that, so yeah. Kimigori Orange Road, the complete TV series. Highly, highly recommend this if you have not picked it up. It's a wonderful, wonderful little show. Really funny, cute, like great, as I said, 80s anime aesthetics and just like 80s and like maybe to some degree early 90s like aesthetics, like that sort of crossover period of like the late 80s into the 90s. Like that, you know, with all these almost like clip art looking stuff and like scrapbook sort of designed the things and then we've got like the orange road uh like spray painted on this wall sort of i mean it's just all very of its era and it's just all so very what i like <laughs> in many ways even though you know i was born in the year that this series came out and yeah it's totally speaks to me it's what i kind of remember growing up in terms of especially style and stuff so yeah um really 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 I recommend it. Um, and then, out of sequence, this would have actually, uh, I think the movie came out in 1988 and then the OVAs, but 
the uh, early 90s, but I also have uh, Kimigori, Orange Road, the complete, what is it, OVA series and movie. So uh, the movie is a sequel to the uh, TV series, like a definitive sequel, a definitive ending. There is actually a whole nother, in fact I can reach it, it's just here. There is actually obviously a whole nother kind of different ending. Um, which we'll talk about in a minute actually, but um, yeah, the movie, what is it called, uh, I Want to Return to That Day, uh, beautiful widescreen proper theatrical film, I'm pretty sure, and uh, yeah, it looks really, really cool, um, brings an end to uh, the story, the love triangle and stuff, um, so you get a proper resolution, this doesn't just, you know, go off <laughs> into like, I don't know who he ends up with, like, we get a definitive answer to that, and um, it's kind of, <laughs> actually I won't go into it, um, but yeah, it's it's what it is. Um, yeah, uh, it's it's cool, and these OVAs, uh, I think there was like eight of them, yeah, eight OVAs that came out in like the early 90s, and they were just side stories to the TV series, so yeah, before the love triangle came to its conclusion, they just... Side stories, I think it's like one of them when they go to like um, like a snowboarding, you know, chalet sort of holiday sort of thing, skiing holiday and things like that. Um, yeah, it's just general comedy, like romantic comedy stuff. Um, it's all cool and here on Blu-ray and looks just as amazing as the TV series does. Um, I'm pretty sure, pretty darn sure. Um, yeah, Kim Glory, Orange Road, uh, the specials and movie. So it's really cool to have as well. Obviously on a fewer discs, just two discs here. And again, the music, like the opening and endings to all this is just so cool. I just like it. I just, the whole aesthetic of this series, just, I love it so much. <laughs> I genuinely adore it. Um, i tell you one thing though, when I look at um, uh, these sets together, uh, if I just quickly put them back together, which is somewhat unnecessary, but there we go. I just look at these and I think, you know, this is the TV series and we have specials in the movie. And I'm just like, God, do I wish Discotech could put out Maze on the Koku. We'd have two of these because it's, you know, quite a long series. And then this set, which would have like the TV specials and the movie and the, you know, the one OVA they did, at least the OVA that's available the one on the desert, deserted island. They can't do like the um, Kyoko, like, uh, Cherry Blossoms OVA, because it's never even come out on DVD in Japan, so I doubt they'd have that. But anyway, it's just like, I love having this. God, do I wish a discotheque could do Maze on the Koku as well. Maybe one day they'll be able to, but for now at least it doesn't seem possible. But boy, do I hope that day eventually arrives, because, yeah, th if this, you know, this is the standard, and I could see them totally knocking it out of the park with Maze on the Koku, but, yeah, anyway. Um, and then, obviously, like I mentioned, I have... Uh, was it again? Uh, summer's beginning. So this is the kind of uh, <laughs> often derided uh, 1995, I think, OVA, which basically basically proposes like I don't know what if like what happened at the end of uh, the movie. What if we just kind of play around with that and be kind and like kind of just bring all this back up again and kind of reset the love triangle for no reason and, and kind of like an absurd reason and I don't know but to be honest like as derided as, as this is and as pointless as it is it doesn't need to exist at all I kind of still liked it like there's some elements to this I really enjoy there's a maturing of the um some of the which is like the characters are older like they're like in their like young adult I'm pretty sure like in their early twenties or something, and it just, um, I don't know, it just, it just sort of, it, it, it has a reason to exist, you don't have to consider it canon, I don't really need to, or feel the need to, and I don't think it's necessary to consider it canon, it's just a what if scenario, an absurd one at that, but I don't know, I, I, I like it, I don't mind it, its existence, did it need to exist, no, would I miss it if it didn't exist, no, obviously, like I was, I wouldn't be feeling the need for more, but we did get more, and as a result, like, if you have Kimigori Orange Road on the Blu-rays that uh, Discote put out, you can still get, there's like two releases of this, you can get it pretty cheap, I'd highly recommend just picking it up and giving it a watch, or maybe... I don't know how many times you would, if you're a collector, maybe pick it up uh, physically, but if you're not, um, yeah, maybe just watch it somewhere the one time that you'll probably ever want to watch it. But I don't know, it's dubbed into English, I'm pretty sure. Different, 
by a completely different voice cast. I mean, the um, uh, the original series has no English dub, as I mentioned. So, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Kimigori, Orange Road, um, Summer's Beginning. It has slightly different character art, which I can't really... The other release does a better... Uh, oh, there we go. So, uh, yeah, slightly different character designs and stuff. But you can see it's the, char the three main characters all grown up. Um, yeah. It deserves less hate than it gets, but I don't know if I go so far as to say it doesn't deserve some hate, but maybe a little bit less than it gets. And then finally, we have the other Machine Robo uh, series, Battle Hackers! Battle Hackers! The one with the really weird, like, rap opening. <laughs> um, Japanese interpretation of 1980s hip hop and rap. Um, you know, disguised as an anime opening. It's, uh, it's fun. <laughs> Ridiculous, but fun. Definitely, like, really tonally different to basically every other anime opening, uh, giant robot-related anime opening of the 80s. But, um, yeah, Machine Robo Battle Hackers! <laughs> um, it's pretty cool. Um, yeah, so this is the sequel, 31 episode sequel. Uh, weird amount of episodes, so I wonder if this series got cancelled along, along the way. Again, as I mentioned when talking about Machine Ro Robo, the... Um, uh, this series, this franchise, came out at the very tail end of Giant Robot, like, fever, if you will, uh, from, you know, you know, basically the mid-70s to uh, the mid-80s, and yeah, obviously, this being 1988, 87, 87, um, yeah, meant that this was basically right at the tail end, so I don't know, but um, I don't really, don't really want to read the back, because it is a direct sequel, from what I understand, so, yeah. Uh, and I obviously haven't seen the original yet, so yeah, Machine Robo Battle Hackers <laughs> is really cool to have. Did I show the packaging? I don't remember. I'm going to do it again. <laughs> yeah, uh, wow, there's some cool art in there. I, wanna, I mean, it's the same as disc art. Let's just see it in bigger uh, form, and hopefully without the blue light from the camera screen, whatever. Yeah, nice artwork. Um, Looking forward to eventually watching it, whenever that day will come. I'm sure I'll get at least some enjoyment out of it, and I'm happy to own it. Obviously, this is also HG Productions, just like the first series, so another one where, if you want it, prioritise it, because, yeah, it might disappear relatively quickly. Um, yeah, so uh, that's 1986 to 87, yeah. I don't know why I can't... I can't keep up on that. So I got one more part, 88 to 89. I don't believe there's that much in that. Uh, I did already take it out. Yeah, six, just six titles for that. Um, and then at some point we'll do other videos. I've got 70s stuff, 90s stuff, more modern stuff for discotheque. And then I've also obviously got lots of anime I've picked up from other companies. All stuff I hope to touch upon eventually. So yeah, uh, look forward to that. I don't know when those videos will come, but... Hopefully they will one day. So yeah, I'm Blaze. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed. And I'll see you next time.